Hi, this is Jonathan, and welcome to Tech Tutorial number 10, Automatic Bibliographies. This is by far the most complicated tutorial that I've made thus far, and it's also one of the most important tutorials. So let's get started. Um, to begin, I'm going to tell you about the bib file, which can be opened if you're on a Mac with a program called BibDesk. You download this with Mac Text 2011 or 12 and it's even with 2010 and probably earlier. I'm using 2012, so I suggest you do as well. Uh, I do not use this program, but you could use it. It doesn't require any complications, except um, it doesn't always work. It doesn't always do what I want it to do. So, um, it, for example, it doesn't correct you all the time on your how you format your entries, because when you save a bib file, it's very critical that um, when you compile your LaTeX document, it understands the information encoded here. So in this file we have our site key, which is the thing we're going to use in our text file later. I can show you, you just do like site, and then I'll put Nielsen 1985, and that would be the indicator that I want to source this information, and it will create uh, an entry in the text, and then associate that um, with the underneath in the bibliography at the very end of the document. So anyway, um, let's move on. So in order to make these things, these bib files perfect, I use a program that runs only in Linux. So I use VirtualBox, which is free, and I'm running Ubuntu 11.04. Um, so before we get started with Ubuntu 11.4, there's a couple things you have to do. First of all, you have to install MySQL on your host computer and you can do that by going to MySQL, downloading the DMG file, and then make sure that it's running. You'll see here it's running with the green running symbol. So once that's done, that's easy. Then go to Network. I'm sorry, don't go to Network, forget Network. Go to Sharing, and click on Remote Login. That allows you to SSH, Secure Shell uh, protocol, to your host machine from another computer. In this case, from our virtual box. Using your username, at the IP address of this computer. All right, close that. Then go to your virtual machine. Um, you might have to shut it down. So, well, I'm not going to do it. But go to virtual box up in the left corner. You have to do. You know what? Where's the thing? There. You cannot click here and then settings. You have to click here and then go up to the virtual box and then click preferences. This is global preferences as opposed to virtual individual virtual machine preferences. Go to the network, click on this plus sign. That adds this VBox Net Zero. It's a virtual um, network device. Okay? Then go to your local settings. Go to settings. Um, go to network. Then go to adapter one is your NAT that's going to allow your computer to be your virtual box to share your, your host's network so you're on the internet if you need to be. Then go to, uh, you do need to be, by the way. Adapter 2, then click on host only adapter. Everything else is okay. This is the uh, network adapter. Hit okay. Okay, so once that's up and running, um, the other thing you have to do on your host is start terminal. Um, after you download and install Mac Text 2012 or even 11, do sudo tlmgr and then do update and then dash dash self. That's going to update the updater. To make sure you're up to date with the, the updater so everything's straight and then um, do that again except do all the second time and that'll update particularly Bieber to um, today the modern version is 1.2 and bit latex is 2.2 it's going to upgrade those two things which you absolutely have to do otherwise you'll have problems so once that's done um, then you want to do if config and then you'll see Scroll till you see VBox Net Zero, that's your virtual network device. Go to ENet here and you'll see your IP address, which is 192.168.56.1. Go back to your virtual machine. Once that's up and running, start your terminal and type in sudo apt get apt get install Bebus. So you have to be on the internet on your host machine. Um, hit enter, that will install Bebus. That's done. The next thing we have to do is Beavis will actually use MySQL server. It can use um, SQLite, I think, too. We're going to use MySQL. Um, you have to create a tunnel, an SSH tunnel, 
to your local host of your host machine. I know this is complicated, but that's what you have to do. Um, you can do this by starting terminal and just typing the command out, which is SSH L3306, which is the port of MySQL local host, which is the host of um, the virtual machine, to forwarding it to port 3306 of the host machine. And it's going to be Jonathan, which is my username, at this address down here, the 192 address, 192.168.56.1. And what that will do is open up a, um, you can type your password, boom, I'm logged into my MacBook Air and I can type ls and it will give me a list of all the files on my host machine. So um, if you don't want to type that in every time, um, I use Ubuntu 11.4, 11.04 because I can right click on the desktop and do create launcher and just switch this to application and terminal call it ssh tunnel host and then type the exact same command ssh l3306 and blah 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 um, type that in hit ok and you'll get a nice little launcher that looks like this on your desktop and then instead of typing this every time you just double click it and it works and then you're you're set and you don't want to close this window you want to leave it open then go to applications then go to beavis start it up beavis will then have access to mysql server on your host machine um, ask for a password for your database. Um, the only reason it came up with this prompt is because I already have a database. The first time you run Beavis, it's going to ask you, do you want to use MySQL or uh, SQLite? Start with MySQL. Hit OK on that. Um, create. A, yeah. First, it's going to ask you to create a new database. Just let it create Biblio.db. Um, Biblio you can see I'm logged in because at the top it says database equals BiblioDB at 127.0.0.1. I want to make this very clear. When you start off, your when you connect, you have to. I know you have port forwarding enabled, but you have to change this host from localhost to 127.0.0.1. You have to do that. Um, I didn't set a password because I don't care. No one's going to break into this. Um, select the database that you just created. I hope you did. Um, I already have one, so I couldn't do it anymore. But okay, then basically to add a reference, you can just do this: new reference, go to book, um, type in Roger Roger Lewis. I don't know, whatever title, um, the tree, and pub year two thousand five. If I hit OK, the best thing about this program is this: it says, "Hey, the format of the name wasn't right. You should do name." The last name, then the first name and middle name, with a comma separating the last name and the first name. Or like this. That's the best part. You want to re edit? Yes. Um, Roger dash, let's say it was Lewis's last name. Lewis's last name and Roger, comma Roger. Hit OK, it adds the thing correctly. So it basically fixes things for you. That's why I use this program. Also, when it's time to use LaTeX, do file export and you can export to any of these formats. BibTeX is the one you want to use for this purpose, but if you have a publisher that uses PubMed to do medical documents, boom, you're set. You can export to any of these things. You can even export to SQLite. So do uh, BibTeX and then you're going to want to do uh, probably all or your selection. What do you want to export? I'm going to do all and then you have to select UTF-8 at some point. Let's just do uh, export.bib just for, for fun. Let me see this. Okay, hit save. And then do UTF 8 is important. Hit OK. It exports that file. Somehow get that file onto your desktop because um, that's what we're going to use now. So close this up. Now we're going to start off with a uh, template. And I'm going to show you all the standard um, commands that you need to get this thing running. Um, okay. The first thing you want to use is you want to use CS quotes. So use package. Gosh, it's nine minutes and twenty seconds. I gotta go fast. Okay, CS quotes. Then use use package um, Babel, and this is allows you to switch languages. So if I want to do German, I just put German in there. If you want to do American, switch it to American. I'm gonna use German just for the just to make it complicated. Um, use package. This is the most important one. Bib latex. But you have to put in here, I don't think you have to do this anymore, but I just do for, just to be sure, put Beaver, because that's what we're using as our back end. Um, you don't even have to do this either, but you can do this to make sure. Um, yeah, 
company. Okay, and then this is important, style equals, and then there's all kinds of styles you can look up in the bib latex um, documentation. I use author year all the time for my documents, so um, that basically formats your bibliography. Then declare language mapping. Make sure you spell this right, because if you don't, you'll have problems. German, um, and then you can put in here German dash APA. You can also do American and then American dash APA, which is what I use for English. And then you have to do add your bibli bibliography to it. Sorry, I'm a little rushed here. Add bib resource, and then you're going to do the directory reference the, the, where the file is, so dot forward slash bib export. So relative to this file, where's the bib? And you have to include the extension uh, require require. Um, Dot bit at the end. So extension is required. Then delete this junk. Let's just say this the citation is after it is here. I don't know. Now I'll just do cite and then type Nielsen, which was our thing, 1985. That's our call the cite key. Cite is really basic, so use paren cite and then you can see there's other ones, there's footnote cite, or I mean foot cite. Then to print the bibliography, you do print bibliography. Okay, then you have to typeset this. You do have to have the files. Um, oh, I should have called it text. You have to use um, the all the auxiliary files need to be there. What? I right, get rid of these things. I must have made a typing mistake, but I really want to keep this video under 15 minutes. Okay, so it did that, and then um, notice the parentheses around it. That's because we use parensight. Now we're going to typeset it again using bib text. It's going to use a special file called this bcf file, which has to be in the same folder. So if you use a different script to typeset stuff, that automatically deletes auxiliary files, so you'll have an issue. So don't do it at least when you're typesetting a bibliography. Um, this does usually take a minute. Not that long though. Okay, there we go. It does take a little bit. Now go back to XE Latex, hit typeset, and you'll see this will change. You'll have a nice looking citation. Boom! You're set. And it's already, notice it's in German, You've got here um, the Hagerstedt font instead of um, um, edited by. Let's just change this to American English just to, just for fun. American, American. You got to change those three things. Then just change this to foot site just for fun too. And then let's type set it again and see how what happens. Um, Okay, notice the error. This is a typical error. It says, what is this? Set language German. You have to delete all these things, all the auxiliary files. And and I forget this every time, so if you forget, don't be sad. Um, type set again. Anytime you switch languages, you have to re you have to delete everything and start over. Go back to div text, because you're gonna have to generate. I think what bib text does is it writes information to your auxiliary file or something. Uh, right into BBL. Yeah, I don't actually know the, the whole process, but okay, perfect. Now we have an English version, references, and then here we have the addition by instead of the German. And then also notice the footnote reference, page one. Obviously, you're not going to have the bibliography on the same page as your um, as um, your text, but yeah. So you can do like here, you can do a new page or something. Okay, um, that is the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I would encourage you to please leave comments, give me a thumbs up so we can um, so I can get more popular on YouTube. And also, um, I think we can help each other out if you have questions, ask ask them. And if you have comments or improvements or ideas for new videos, please post them. And I think. Um, we can create a nice community here. Okay, and thanks for your attention, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.